Hey, how are you? Well, today I'm going to finally finish a renovation that I started about six years ago. I renovated my mudroom and really I, I pretty much finished the job except for the drawer and that's because we were going into, uh, it was either Thanksgiving or Christmas and I just wanted to get the thing finished and we ended up putting a basket in the space and that's how it remained for the next six years. So I'm going to finally finish that and when I go inside to fit the drawer, I'll talk a little bit about the renovation because there's a couple things in there that I think you'll find interesting. One is the Wayne's coating. I used a very high Wayne's coating because it's an entryway, it's a mudroom and it's narrow and I've got four kids and it just holds up really well, Wayne's coating does and because it's trim and it's painted with a trim paint it's easy to clean. And also I put a hardwood floor down on a concrete subfloor and that's held up really well too so I'll talk a bit about that. So now let's go ahead and get working on that drawer. I'm going to build the drawer out of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood which is a really strong plywood. It has a lot of veneers and very few voids, so it holds a screw really well. And that's how I'm going to build this drawer. I'm essentially just going to screw it together. Now, unfortunately, this piece of plywood was the top of a work surface upstairs in my studio for years. So one side is nice and clean and the other side is really pretty messy. So my plan now is to rip the plywood to width and then run it through the sander and see if that cleans up the surface enough if not, probably what I'll do is finish the outside of the drawer natural and the inside of the drawer I'll paint white. drawers sides and front and back to length and width and after running them through the sander they look pretty good they're not perfect but they're not too bad and I just won't point it out to anybody the nice thing is I'm not going to have to paint the inside of the drawer now so the next step is to cut a quarter inch groove in the bottom of the drawer and that's to accept the drawer bottom I set my saw fence to five eighths of an inch which is a little bit heavier than usual usually I'm right around three eighths of an inch but with a drawer this deep, I don't mind losing a little space inside the drawer and this will make the drawer a little bit stronger. And also I'll be able to use the space that's underneath the bottom of the drawer and or really between the bottom of the drawer and the bottom of the drawer front as a stop block. And this will come into play when I go to fit the drawer. I've run all the drawer parts through the saw making an eighth inch groove and I also ran a scrap piece of plywood through the saw at the same time. And the reason for that is now I'll back the saw fence up maybe a sixteenth of an inch, run it through the saw again and see where I'm at when I put it on the piece of quarter inch plywood that I'm using for my bottom. Chances are it'll still be a little bit too tight. I'll take a little bit more off and try it again. Once I have a nice fit on the scrap piece of plywood then I'll run all the parts through once more. Well, that's a pretty tight fit, but I think it might be just a, a bit too tight and make it difficult to assemble the drawer. So I'll go back to the saw and take just a little bit more off. Okay, and I think that looks good. Okay, well I finished cutting the groove in the two sides and the front of the drawer, but for the back of the drawer, I'm going to raise the blade and cut this piece off. I've clamped the drawer together to get a measurement for the bottom of the drawer, and for the width, I'll measure from the groove from one side of the drawer to the other, which is 24 and 5 eighths. 
And for the depth, that's not quite as important because it doesn't matter if it hangs off the back a little bit. So I'll just measure the length of the drawer side, which is 26 inches. I'm assembling the drawer by screwing it together and I'm using inch and five eighths trim head screws. And it makes for a really nice strong drawer and it's a pretty easy drawer to make. Now obviously there's a lot of different ways to make drawers, but if you don't want to get involved in dovetailing, this is one way to go. Now I think one thing to remember when you're using hardware is just take the extra time and measure out so everything lines up and there's a nice symmetry to your work. With this drawer, I'll measure down from the top and pre-drill a hole at one and then skip every two inches. Three, five, seven, nine, and eleven. I've set the drill press up to drill countersink holes just about an eighth of an inch deep. I put an eighth inch drill bit in the drill and now I'll pre-drill through the countersink hole. And now with all the parts ready, I can glue and screw the drawer together. That's not the right thing to do. I'm supposed to put the glue on this side. Things didn't exactly go smooth at the end of the day here. My camera ran out of battery, the car got filled, I forgot to turn the microphone on, but the drawer for the most part is built. I'll come in tomorrow and build the front, which is going to basically, basically be like a flat panel, and then I can start to fit the drawer. I came in this morning and gave the drawer a good sanding, and then I brought it upstairs and gave it a coat of polyacrylic. It's an acrylic uh, it's basically a, an acrylic polyurethane by Minwax, and it dries really quickly. And so while that's upstairs drying, I'm going to get to work on the front of the drawer, which is basically a face frame, and I'm going to make that out of poplar, and I'll get started by ripping strips at two and a half inches. <laughs> Once I finished cutting my styles and rails to size, I used the Craig jig to join the face frame together. I then changed the angle of my table saw to 7 degrees to make molding to fit inside the face frame. Now I'm going to go upstairs and get the drawer, bring it back down here, attach the face frame, and then I can start to trim it out. Well, the finish on the drawer is dry, so I can bring it back downstairs and get to work 
And a quick look at last week's project. This is a cabinet I built for my daughter. The top is cherry and I finished it with four coats of Minwax Wipe on Poly. And the cabinet, I primed it with two coats of a latex acrylic primer and then painted it with two coats of a semi-gloss oil paint. Now I also let my daughter do a painting on the back of the cabinet. It's just kind of a, a nice way to remember her being little. And uh, I made a video on that as well. So if you want to check out the build, I'll put a link on the screen. And if you want to see her making this painting, I'll also put a link on the screen. Good enough. Let's get back down to the shop and finish the drawer. I'll use a little wood glue and inch and a quarter screws to attach the face frame to the front of the drawer. That cut was just a little bit heavy, so I'll take just a little bit more off. Now I'm ready to go inside and fit the drawer and I'll bring this piece of half inch plywood with me and this also happens to be Baltic birch plywood which is nice. It was just a scrap that I had lying around but it's, it's good to use good materials and uh, Baltic birch plywood is just so much nicer than the plywood that you get at your home store. So anyway, uh, I'll bring this with me. First I'll pre-drill these holes and then we'll fit the drawer. Okay, well I'm in the mudroom and you can tell it's a very narrow room and the first thing I'm going to do is attach the stop and since the front of the drawer measures an inch and a half, I'll measure in from the face frame of the cabinet an inch and a half and attach the stop. I wanted to point out that I've also attached runners that are flush with the face frame of the cabinet and travel the depth of the cabinet. That will keep the drawer from shifting from side to side. Okay, well I'm pretty happy with the way the drawer fits. I would still have to paint it. Hopefully it will take me six years to paint the drawer and, I, and I'll also have to put knobs in it or on it. Now I want to put two knobs on it but my wife thinks that it only needs one knob so what I'll probably do is try to tape two knobs on and just see what it looks like but uh, that's kind of on the back burner. It'll get done in a week but uh, what I wanted to talk about now was the trim just in case you have a trim job coming up. I was pretty happy with this one. What I use for casing is 1x4 and then I back banded the 1x4 with a piece of trim that measures an inch and 3 eighths. And the reason for that is I like to have the top of the chair rail dead end into the back band. So you can see that the top of the chair rail measures an inch and a quarter and that gives you an eighth of an inch reveal right here. And it's just a nice look. I always, I probably sound like a broken record, but when I talk about trim, I always talk about how does it end. You have to think about how the trim will end. So uh, that's uh, what I did here. Now to talk a little bit about the wainscoting. Uh, we used a high wainscoting because it's a really tight room 
and the kids just sort of ping pong off of the walls as they go in and out and this stays clean pretty uh, pretty easily it's pretty easy to maintain now I used a 1 by 8 for my bottom baseboard let's just move the camera and take a look at it for the baseboard I used a 1 by 8 which measures 3 quarters by 7 and a quarter and then for the shoe molding this is just a piece of molding that I ripped on the table saw that is a half of an inch by three quarters of an inch with a chamfer ripped on it or a 45 degree angle ripped on it. And you can see it dead ends right into the back band. Now the one thing to think about when you're using wainscoting, if you're going to use a tall wainscoting is try to keep your wainscoting uh, under 48 inches because uh, in this case, this is MDF, which you buy uh, by the sheet and it's a four by eight sheet. And so if you keep your, uh, your height under 48 inches where you can get two runs with one sheet. The total height of the chair rail is 54 inches and the wainscoting measures 43 and three quarters and that's because I'm, to get the 54 you're obviously adding the width of the chair rail and the baseboard. One of the more difficult things I had to deal with when I started this project was the floor and this is a brick house and it's an entryway so I couldn't really change the levels too much so what I ended up doing was gluing down quarter inch exterior plywood with a polyurethane glue, oil-based polyurethane glue, and then I glued the hardwood floor down to the quarter inch plywood, also using an oil-based polyurethane glue. And it's held up really well. A little bit of insurance was to put the baseboard on top of the floor at the end with the idea that if the floor wanted to pick up, the baseboard would help hold it down because it's such a short span but uh, it's really held up well, I haven't had any problems. And since we're in the mudroom, I wanted to point out these ceramics. These are by my friend Judy Tavel, and I built this cabinet with the idea of showing her ceramics. And I also wanted to point out this frame. This is from a project that I made last year. It's a really fun project, and it would make a good gift. It's probably a good gift idea, and it's a fun woodworking project. And if you want to see how I made this, uh, I'll put a link on the screen to the video. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.